Welcome to the Career Buzz Podcast by CDI College, providing the training you need for the career you want. At CDI College, our programs are designed to place students directly into the workforce, but we know that the transition can be scary at times. In this podcast, we explore what it's like to be on the ground in the careers you choose. We talk to professionals, alumni, and experts in the field. They share real stories of adaptation and innovation in a constantly changing environment. No matter what profession you choose, there is something for you at CDI College. Okay, so we're back again for CDI College's podcast, Career Buzz. I'm excited to dive into a new topic. Well, for myself, I've just started to learn more and more about accounting and payroll administration now that I have my own podcast business. Uh, but again, not too familiar with it. So that's why I'm excited to take a look into this area. And also, Math and I are maybe not best friends. So I have a great guest today. His name is Brian. Can't wait to talk to him. And we're going to just tell you a little bit about CDI College's online accounting and payroll administration program, which of course allows students to work in roles such as accounting clerk, tax return preparer, benefits officer, and etc. There's so many other uh, great jobs in this uh, program that you can do after graduating. So we're going to touch on that. Um, students gain a solid foundation in computer and office administration, along with essential skills in accounting, bookkeeping, computerized accounting, systems and payroll. Brian is a PCP, which is a payroll compliance practitioner. And I'm going to get him to tell us a little bit more about that because again, that is out of my wheelhouse. So I'm excited to welcome Brian. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Well, I'm excited. Like I said, this is a world that I'm not all too familiar with. So let's start with it for people that might be wondering, what is a PCP? That's a good question. So PCP is a designation under what was once the Payroll Association, now known as the National Payroll Institute. Uh, they are, it stands for Payroll Compliance Practitioner, and it is a certification you get after rigorous educational training, and in this case, a one-year work experience, as well as membership with the National Payroll Institute. Uh, it basically says that you know what you're doing and you can do payroll across Canada in every province and territory and you understand all the laws necessary to make that happen to advise and make sure your company is compliant with basically everything they need to know to be able to service uh, employees and uh, the exec board. And what made you decide, what's your Brian story? Like what drew you to this career? Like why did you need to be a PCP? Well, unfortunately, payroll isn't one of those like really, really uh, high profile careers that you see in like movies where Iron Man's a payroll compliance practitioner. So we're not going to go and have that uh, as my main inspiration. In reality, it was just kind of a family thing I fell into. Uh, I was in high school and uh, my biz my family had a uh, side business because my sister needed funding from the government. We got money to fund for caregivers and we had to hire a payroll compliance practitioner to go in and do that kind of work. And I kind of learned by watching what they did, realizing I can make it a little bit more efficient with my minimal Excel skills. And then I just questioned them and harassed them a bunch until I got a little Excel sheet going. And I taught myself the net pay calculation from there. Uh, other than that, uh, my dad was also in the business uh, in a system consulting role, and he's uh, also an educator. And I kind of learned along that side. And then I, while I'm doing all that, I just went to study medicine, realized that I'm too afraid to touch, in this case here, any kind of bodies and switch back to business. Once you get that kind of vigor going for medicine, you're like, business is quite easy <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and then in this case, going from there, uh, just kind of fell into business and found out I just really like that social aspect of uh, working here. It's so funny. I think a lot of us flirt with the idea of medicine. And, and I remember I was like, as soon as I figured out you had to look at blood all day, I was like, bless the people that can do that. That's amazing. But I'm like, that's not for me. And that's why I went into broadcasting. Um, but what does a, a typical day look for someone like yourself in a role? It can vary depending upon how complex your business is and what your tasks are for your company. If you're a relatively small business, uh, as in like 20 people or less, you could be taking on more than just payroll tasks. You could be someone who's doing some office administration. You'd be doing some IT, HR, 
They could be doing, in this case, the payroll work, which we'll go into detail later on with. Uh, this includes working behind a computer, uh, getting uh, legal documents from the government re- relating to uh, garnishments, or talking to Service Canada on behalf of employees going on EI. It has to do with a lot of email communication, of course, as most office work will tend to do, and then tracking of information on Excel sheets and other software like Sage, 50, or QuickBooks, or other payroll-specific software like ADP online platforms. Uh, People start to think that this is mostly a math-based job and you're behind the numbers doing dividers and calculating remainders every now and then here and there. But frankly, with technology and Excel and the software we use, most of it's automated. And once we understand the systems in place and what your role is and how it fits in that system, you're mostly just checking that work to make sure it's accurate, the systems are working correctly. You're more as an auditor in some ways, just kind of reviewing. I don't want to claim the title auditor. That's a very specific field. Uh, But it is mostly to do with verifying the success of the system, making sure any hiccups are addressed, dealing with all the weird technical issues that come up because of hundreds of thousands of users. And in this case, you're just making sure that everything's processed correctly by law. Uh, When you go into a bigger company, like a bureaucratic business, uh, where you have a lot of specialties, you may take on one specific role because there's you may be handling not 20 people, but 200 or 1,000 employees. Uh, Campus support, for example, we are a multi-provincial jurisdiction. We cover multiple provinces across the country. We have thousands of employees uh, from various fields, not just as instructors and staff, but administrative people and personnel, and they all need to go through payroll. Any company that has an employee, you need payroll. And that's one of the most versatile jobs as a result because of this. Everyone needs to get paid. <laughs> the end of the line, yeah. We'd like to get that money, right? We do. And it was funny because while I was uh, researching for this, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions people said about working in this field is they felt that they just pay people when they need to be paid. And then the rest of the time, they just sit up with their feet on the desk and don't do any other tasks. <laughs> I wish that was the case, but uh, no, it's uh, it has the vigor of any kind of office administration work. Uh, there's a social element. You need to communicate with your coworkers, your supervisors, different departments all the time. Uh, we have to maintain proper scheduling. Uh, when there is off time, as it were, in terms of we're not in the middle of a process uh, payroll, we're oftentimes doing filing and paperwork and self-auditing our work to make sure that we are compliant. So we don't have anything pile up on us urgently. It's one of those jobs that if you let something slide, then you can have a buildup that will exhaust you and pull you back. So you have to be on top of the ball and be very well organized to do this kind of work. Uh, But if you know what you're doing and you understand the process and your role and you got a good system in place, it's one of those things that you know your next role immediately and you can self-govern and manage your time to make sure that everything is flowing smoothly. You want to get in that kind of nice Zen state of here's what I do next and move on to that task, get it done, move on to the next thing. And it's nice and flexible and easy to kind of manage your time and feel like you're doing new things all the time. But also in this case, you're know you're doing something that's important that needs to be done. So you touched a little bit on some of the great skills that you need, like time management and being organized. Uh, and you mentioned a little bit before that you might not need to be a mathematician, but I would assume that you do need at least some level of math to do the job or a love of numbers. If you don't have a love of numbers, and you'd be surprised how many students have entered our program who do not have a love of numbers and are utterly afraid of what's to come, uh, the amount of math skill you need to have, uh, you need to be able to know how to do addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. Uh, You need to be able to do the basic bed mass, ped mass, depending on the acronym you learned when you were in school, uh, order of operations, and a basic understanding of algebra in terms of just figuring out an equation. That's kind of it. Uh, We have very defined, very easy to understand formulas that teach us exactly how to calculate, for example, a deduction from your paycheck. Uh, For example, when you get a pay, you guys often know that you'll have, let's say, promised $50,000 as an annual salary. But we realistically know after working in the field, you don't actually get $50,000 in your bank account because we keep taking chunks off your pay. I'm sorry, that's us. We're doing that. 
but we got to do it because if we don't, the government's going to make you pay that in taxes at the end of the year. And we're required to do that because the government says it's, it's one of the employer's responsibilities. Uh, plus, FYI, we also contribute a little bit towards yourself at the same time. So there's a formula for CPP, the Canada Pension Plan. We take money off your paycheck for that. We match it with the employer. And then we deposit it in your name to the government. And then we make sure it's a very easy calculation. I can do it on a calculator in about 10 seconds. And it's one of the easiest things you'll learn how to do in the third chapter of payroll compliance legislation or P1104, uh, which is what we call it internally. So you guys can be our best friends too. It seems like you're taking everything off, but you're doing us a favor in the end. You're making our tax life easier when we have to submit for taxes. <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way. If I did not do what I was required to do, one, the company is going to go in and get penalized like to hell. So that's going to screw us up a lot. Uh, but two, you're going to end up owing money every year at the end of your tax season. And you're going to have to pay a big, big chunk of money that normally you don't have to worry about because we're doing it for you. Uh, that's the one of the benefits of being an employee. Payroll does most of your tax payments for you, including CPP, EI, federal provincial taxes, and where necessary in other provinces, QPIP, non payroll tax, and other things. We need you guys. And so that brings me to my next thing is accounting and payroll administration program at CDI College. Can you tell us a little bit of an overview of that program and what people could expect if they are going to join that program in the next uh, period? Accounting and payroll administrator program is a really flexible program. It's kind of your a la carte, do a little bit of everything kind of field. Uh, anyone who wants to enter into the business world, gain a few skills in terms of understanding accounting, gain some skills in terms of business communication, learn about how HR works and do payroll work, get certified for that, which is one of the key details there that we're trying to as one of our selling points. Uh, also, in this case, taxation work. Uh, we can teach you the fundamentals of that course, and that could be a really good starting point for your career. I've had students who graduate from that program who are now tax professionals. I have had students who have finished that program, got experience in the field, and then became future CPA uh, accountants. Uh, I've had students who've come in from different countries, rebuilding their work career in Canada, and now they're trying a new field entirely. They were medical before. And now in this case here, they're trying to go and do this. They were chemists and mechanical engineers and nurses. And it's one of the fields that gives you a lot of really useful skills as well as it just goes and prepares you in terms of these are things you need to be able to address to do anything at that kind of job. There's always going to be that culture shock. I'm not going to try to hide that. That's a thing for every kind of business you go into. But this will give you the tools you need. And once you understand your role of the company, you will know kind of how to take off from there. Um, I don't want to limit the titles either that you can get because the titles we list in the program line are just some of the most common ones that people talk about. I've had students who apply for weird jobs that I've never even heard of as a title, but the certifications we've taught them in this case here make it possible for them to do that work because they're really well adept. Uh, one job title that's more advanced that I've had a student go for was a benefits administrator. Uh, literally, all they do is administer pension plan benefits. They're a well-experienced office worker at that time. They're well-trusted. They're really knowledgeable. And in this case here, they went for a career that was... Uh, upwards uh, 70,000 plus at the time, which is a few years back, which has now gone up quite a bit, actually. Uh, not going to promise that for everyone. It depends on the person and what they're applying for, but uh, there's opportunities here, and I cannot stress just how open the field is to someone with these skills. Well, another thing that I was learning during my research too, is that you can also work in many different industries because many different industries need to pay people and have the different uh, areas to do it. So if you want to work in entertainment, they said you can work in entertainment. If you want to work um, in a lawyer's office, you can work in a lawyer's office. Like there, there's a like, a ton of different areas as opposed to some careers are so niche, right? So that's another benefit, I would say. Yeah, and I again, the way I explain it to people is if you have a company with employees, which is basically most companies, then 
you can have a payroll person there because you need someone to do that work. Either you're going to contract out to someone who's doing payroll on the side as a business, which means you could do that if you want to go and do that on your own, or you can be partnered with the uh, firm that does payroll work as a service provider, or literally you just be hired to do that payroll for them, whether it's the movie industry, whether it's healthcare, whether it's technology, any company and every company that has employees, they need one of us, if not more. True. Again, everybody needs to get paid and they need people to do that work for them because what you guys do is a really hard job. I think a lot of people don't realize it. And it's something that, like you said, you have to be on top of it. You're dealing with money. Um, you're dealing with people's money. Uh, if you miss a few dollars here and there, it does affect everything. So you really have to be on top of it. No pressure at all. <laughs> well, no pressure. But I also want to just kind of for those who are stressed out by the concept of that pressure, we do have a lot of good systems in place to make sure that you're not going in and stressing out about tracking every single dollar. We have software involved that makes our life a lot easier, also allows us to track more people. We have, in this case, the ability to segregate your role so you can work in a team and social environment for those that want to. So there's a lot of ways you can do this and alleviate the stress that can come from that responsibility. Yeah. And, and again, CDI College prepares you for that. And they have wonderful teachers like yourself to uh, help you down that path. That being said, can you tell us a little bit about your teaching career, how long you've been doing it, and what exactly you teach at CDI College? <laughs> uh, my career, according to LinkedIn, which is, uh, they gave me an alert last month, apparently, or early this month. I'm apparently been teaching at CDI for 13 years now. Uh, so there's that, uh, I started in this case here, surprisingly enough, teaching biology classes, uh, until they realized I actually have skills teaching, uh, business and whatnot. I've taught everything and anything from computer courses to the entire payroll program, uh, math and the chemistry and whatnot. I've been a kind of all over the place, but my specialty and why I've been hired is accounting and payroll, uh, specifically to cover the entire course curriculum there. Uh, lately, because of the pandemic, uh, I have been working from home. And my role is somewhat unique in that we need someone with my certification to teach it. Uh, so I've been allocated more towards the payroll side of things. Uh, but we've been able to hire some really great instructors who can now cover the other courses that I no longer have uh, unfortunate time to be able to teach. Uh, and they are able to take in that slack and well good, well-rounded experience. Some of them are CPAs, HR professionals, people who are just in the business uh, field covering different kind of companies, and they get to give a nice, well-rounded experience and background to kind of flesh out uh, things that maybe I lack uh, from being in my field. So I always think that's a really good experience for students to have that multiple instructor facet uh, for these specific hard skills or soft skills. And what do you find fulfilling about your career so far? Teaching, PCP, a little bit of both. I'm sure there's fulfilling aspects of all of it. It's a fulfilling career. I mean, I've been able to last for 13 years for a reason because I do actually really enjoy my work. Um, I love the variety. Uh, I'm not pigeon held to one specific role and I get to interact with students and hear about what's driving them, what they're trying to go towards. Uh, I personally really just enjoy, and this may sound weird, I, I like getting in the student's head, uh, figuring out where their mind's at during a lecture, and then kind of just guiding them down the path until they realize the concept before I have to say it out loud. If I can kind of work that angle that they are following me, they're following me, they're following me, they realize the answer to the question before I have to actually give it to them, and then they can present it to me, I'm the most happy. And, when that can happen, because that means that they understood it and they didn't need me to tell them the answer to get it, which I think is infinitely more valuable for a learner. And what is your favorite course to teach in this program? That's hard. <laughs> I actually do like teaching quite a few courses uh, in the payroll field. Of course, I definitely love teaching the uh, PCL, PF1 and PF2 courses. Uh, they're always quite interesting in the subjects we can cover. Uh, and just making sure there's a lot of utility in what you learn there. Um, I really like teaching Word and Excel courses. I don't have the time for that one, unfortunately, just because it's a really useful tactile skill 
and you can do so much with it. And students don't realize just how much you can learn in 20 minutes uh, with a good, just focused uh, demonstration on that. And biology, I am still love my uh, background roots there. Uh, oh, I also teach first aid. So first aid classes are fun with Red Cross. And what is the most surprising thing about your PCP career? Something that maybe you never even thought about when you decided to take it? That is hard to say because we're kind of built on being prepared for everything. But uh, one of the key things I never realized is just how much networking uh, I was going to be exposed to. Now, I'm going to premise this by saying I absolutely hate networking. Uh, the way I had always conceptualized it in my head uh, was this kind of, and I don't say this uh, with this being accurate to the actual industry. You can do this in a better way. But in my mind, I had this very sterile uh, view of networking where you're just here for that relationship for business purposes and you want to get something out of it. I don't like that. I want to have that connection with a person. Uh, but it, going through payroll, it kind of changed my mind on this because I would meet with someone random in some field and I would talk about my work and their work. I'd realize they have a problem. I would try to help them with the solution or tell them where they can go to get it. And then they often just ask me for, do I know people who could potentially help them? And I find a lot of students uh, who in my mind who are just capable of doing what they want and I can just kind of reference them. And I, that I think was just surprising because it changed the way I thought about networking. It changed the way that you're no longer doing it to help yourself. You're actually doing it to help someone else. Uh, and you just build a more cohesive, more, uh, I think, well-rounded relationship with that person when you're not doing it just for yourself, but you're actually just trying to serve someone else's benefit. So it kind of brought me around on that, I think. I would have never thought it would be networking. I'm not trying to stereotype all you payroll people, but I, I, I would extreme. I feel like you guys are probably more introverted than extroverted. But again, that's a stereotype, maybe. But <laughs> I, I've seen that a lot. Some people, yes, it could be the one person show going in and just doing their own thing, and they get their little alcove and they're comfy and they're fine. That's fine. And there's also the people who are like just social butterflies that really like to interact with each other and get to just talk and socialize and learn about their day. And that actually is really, really a big part of this. You're going to see a lot of the teams people work with in payroll tend to be very open office concept and uh, just kind of getting to know your team members, even if they're not part of your department. And you're going to have to know everyone in the office because you're paying all them. <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, again, we try to keep it a little bit discreet, go by number, employee numbers rather than names. But yeah, I mean, you got to know in this case here what you're doing and uh, just make sure that people get what they need done. If someone has a problem uh, with their paycheck, they're going to come to you for help. And you just got to be able to bring out that customer service in the most beneficial way possible to make sure that they get what they need and your job is done properly. Because oftentimes if they're coming to a problem, there's something weird that just happened. And that's a test on your system to make sure that you know what your system's doing. And you just uh, mentioned something important that leads into what I was going to ask you next is the fact that we might not find that uh, payroll is uh, very stressful, but there is. There's a lot of different stressful elements uh, that you have to deal with, especially if something might go wrong. Like you said, you might have somebody that's a bit disgruntled and you got to be able to smooth that over. So how do you keep yourself mentally healthy? What do you do for your self-care when you get off of work? I uh, premise this with saying I'm potentially the worst person to ask this question. I, I preach more than I actually do. Uh, but what I do preach is, I think, fairly useful. And when I do at least follow my own guidance and this, it, I tend to feel better. Um, I find community is actually one of the best ways to support yourself. Uh, community can mean a lot of things to people, whether it's family, friends, religion, whatever. Um, the case for me is I found that just working in my field, whether I was in the office or whether I was working from home, having those close friends that I can kind of rely upon, talk to at the workplace, just casually like, shoot the breeze, take a moment to step away from the work and just kind of regroup yourself and refocus and just kind of take your mind off the task at hand really helps you center yourself. Um, I tend to do that. If we were not in uh, pandemic mode, I actually would be in the campus and 
when I'm doing some work, I'd probably step away, wander the office, talk to, in this case, reception or the different departments and just check what's going on or just offer my support to them in some other way. Because I think uh, when you get too stuck in your own head, uh, you get, you only see the problems. But if you can just maybe focus on someone else's problem for a moment, it kind of frees you up to think about things differently. I find that really helps me a lot. Just try to solve someone else's problem for a little bit, be helpful and be part of a team for a little bit there. I say that's great advice. I th- feel like we could use that no matter what career uh, we're in. Uh, one other thing I want to know too, before we go is how well does this program prepare the students uh, for a role in accounting and payroll administration in the real world? I mean, it has to prepare them. Otherwise, we're not allowed to run it. Uh, that's the rule of <laughs> ministry education for us. Um, I believe it. accounting and payroll administrator program, uh, f- its out- goals are to take a student who doesn't necessarily have any background in this field and has the basic uh, administrative requirements of high school graduates or mature student, proficient English language skills, proficient math skills. With those capabilities... We should be able to bring you up to a proper computer standard that you can be uh, what I would consider an intermediate in office software, uh, adept at computer skills to the point that you can generally troubleshoot uh, what you need to without having to go through IT, then IT support, of course. And then you should be able to develop the customer service skills and professionalism you need to be able to kind of just operate in a general office environment. With that said, um, the accounting and payroll program has always been and uh, targeted towards people who are trying to start their career. Uh, we never saw this as the end goal for someone. Uh, payroll is a good starting career. There's room to grow uh, from there and then develop your career further. Uh, but maybe you want don't know really what you want to do right now. And accounting and payroll, this program here can help you jump into the field. And then in this case, see where you'd like to go from there. And like you said, a lot of people go on afterwards and realize that maybe they want to take some more education and be a CPA. And there, there's probably other things in that realm, too, is once people dive into the world of payroll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, if you just want to try industries, you can just jump industries with payroll because, again, they're hiring employees. They need us. You get to learn what that industry looks like from the inside out. And if you don't like that industry, the hell with it. Go to another one and then go from there. So it's the easiest way to kind of spy out the job you want by seeing those jobs in action. Great advice. One more thing. Uh, why should people take this program? If you're going to give me your little sales pitch, why should people come take the payroll and administrative program at CDI College? You should take a program with us because one, you feel that we give you the value that you want. You've had a chance to come to our campus, see our in uh, material, talk to an instructor. I always encourage you to talk to one of us to make sure you can ask personal questions. And you basically feel comfortable that uh, we can provide you with what we need. We believe we can, but frankly, if we can't, you need to find what's best for you. And that's always the key to any kind of educator. Uh, You have to make sure that it is in the service of your needs. That is what I would say. You're coming to us because you believe you're ready to jump in the field. You know what you're in, into, what you're prepared to do. You set your time aside for this, and you want to start a career in payroll, accounting, bookkeeping, taxation, or just general business. That's the ultimate sales pitch there. Uh, but really, for yourself, it's because you think that we're a good fit for you. Sometimes we're not, and that's fair. There's a lot of good providers out there, but we would like to be the provider for you. And if you want to know more about it, can they contact you, Brian, (laughs) and learn from you? (laughs) They definitely can. Uh, Just because I don't want to jump the gun on any of this, uh, there are admission representatives who can definitely go and support you. But if you ask for me uh, from them, my name is Brian Joe Peter, a full name Joe uh, Joe Peter at the end, uh, then you can go in, they'll refer you to me, and we can have a chat, and 
uh, potentially go and just have a conversation, even if it's over Zoom. Love it. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And of course, if anyone is looking at the accounting and payroll administration program at CDI College, all you have to do is go to CDI College ca for more information. Again, thank you so much, Brian, uh, for coming here today and, and changing my point of view of uh, the world of payroll. Well, I'm glad I could change someone's mind. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, problem. Thank you. Like I said, math and my, and maybe it's not my strong suit, but I appreciate people like you because like I said, we need people like you because then we'll all get paid. Uh, here's hoping. We're looking for the paycheck at the end of the week, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Career Buzz Podcast brought to you by CDI College, the training you need for the career you want. Make sure to continue the conversation by following us on our social media pages. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any episodes. And for more information about CDI College, check out our website, cdicollege.ca. Talk to you next time.